This is a story of adventure, heartbreak, defeat, and redemption. I gotta warn you, I get a little vulnerable in this video sometimes, but I wanted to share it with the goal of inspiring others to do something similar. Because while yes, this is a story of my first ever solo adventure to a foreign country, this is really a love story. Just not the kind you're used to. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always looked at the world with a sense of awe and wonder. For the past two or three years, I've been trying to make my dreams come true. By starting a business, starting this YouTube channel, and just generally following my passions instead of just doing what society expects me to do. I've really put myself out there in that my family and friends all know about my hustles and it just kind of feels as if everyone is either waiting for me to crash and fail or to be this big humongous success and despite all my efforts I'm still making extremely slow progress. At the end of the day I don't want life to be about checking off boxes and being a success. I just want to enjoy myself as much as possible but recently it feels as if I'm not even getting the same excitement from the process of my passions anymore. And if I'm not getting enjoyment from that, then what the hell am I doing? I feel like I'm not fitting in with as many people because of my choices, but those choices are supposed to be making me happy. So why aren't they? A few months ago, a big up-and-coming actor, Tristan Spawn, reached out to me after seeing one of my videos. When you're in this constant flow of just running through life on this directionless autopilot, that's what life gives you, is, is no direction, no opportunity. After taking Tristan's advice, I decided I needed to break the cycle of directionless autopilot by taking my first ever solo adventure to Los Angeles. The only thing I didn't realize when booking the flights was that before I was ever going to get to LA, I had to endure an over 18 hour long layover in Copenhagen. Ultimately, not much actually happened there. I discovered they have public electric scooters, so I rented one of those and drove into the city, which looked like something out of a fictional movie, by the way, with the building designs and everyone riding around on bicycles, it looked incredible. But with it being pretty late and me not able to speak the local language, after a quick bite to eat, I decided to go back to the airport where I would be attempting to spend the next 12 hours sleeping. Yeah, so as you can see, it's currently 10 past five and yeah, basically didn't sleep at all last night. Probably the worst night's sleep I've ever had. If anything, it's made me really grateful to just have a bed and uh, very appreciative of the struggle that homeless people go through, you know? I'm surprised I didn't get kicked out, to be honest. I saw a few homeless people come in and they got kicked out, which I felt bad about, but I guess they could tell I was an actual customer here. It really does change the way you look at things whenever you essentially spend a night being homeless in a foreign country where you don't know anyone and don't speak the language. It was amazing that I was having this big of an emotional breakthrough before I even reached LA, but admittedly, it was making me nervous for what more obstacles I would face when I finally made it there. Oh my god, we're actually here guys. I've dreamed about coming here for so long. This is so surreal. Oh my god, we're here. So cool. This is currently me on Venice Beach. Helicopter, Santa Monica Pier. Pretty GTA style, watching the sunset, which you can probably see in my reflection of my glasses. Yeah. This is 
Well, I imagine. Overall, my first day there was pretty chill. I watched the sunset, I met up with some pretty cool guys who were living in the same hostel as me, and we went out and got a couple of drinks together. But really, I still ended up getting a pretty early night, because I wanted to be ready for all the adventures that were waiting for me the next day. Okay, so maybe I had more drinks than I realized, because I'm not going to lie, I didn't record it, but I woke up with a little bit of vomit in my bed. Thankfully, the cleaners were really nice and cleaned it and changed my bed sheets without any hassle. But the biggest shocker of that day was that all the friends I made yesterday had left the hostel. I guess it was time for me to go out and meet new people. Guys, I got a bike. a bike right along the beach, a really long bike ride, apparently I was gone in two hours, and the drink, like a nice coffee chocolate drink, and look, it has my name on it, that's pretty cool, <laughs> just like the movies guys. The main thing I wanted from this trip was to connect with like-minded people, something I felt severely lacking back in my hometown. But not only was I not finding those people, I was struggling to connect with anybody. I kept meeting different people, talking or hanging out for a few hours, and then they just wouldn't answer my messages and I'd never see them again, which was actually making my confidence much worse. Okay, so it is currently my third day in LA. The holiday's not really exactly turned out how I thought it would. I've been with tons of friends with tons of strangers. But I guess the part where it's differing is that I'm not really getting to continuously hang out with them. This was honestly some of the loneliest that I've ever felt. It didn't matter where I went, my problems were going to come with me. At this point, the whole thing seemed pointless, and honestly, I kind of just wanted to go home. But then something really weird happened. Remember this guy from the first night? Well, his name's Kyle. And it turns out he was also just running around LA by himself without anyone. And we both even went to Beverly Hills on the same day just by ourselves. So after we finally got speaking again, we decided, hey, why not hang out together, right? Yes, where will we go? So we stopped in this diner on the way in. Look at these chicken sandwiches, we both got them. They look so, so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to get a bite and I'll get your reaction to it? <laughs> Damn, dude, that's beautiful. Kyle's from Kansas. Say the line. <laughs> I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. So, what made you want to come to LA? It was. Uh, like your childhood curiosity. I want to see all the landmarks from my favorite TV shows and movies. Uh, maybe see a celebrity. Just walking past them. I don't want to say hi. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was a kind of a similar thing. I'm still kind of figuring out what I'm doing with my life, I guess. Recently, I've realized it's definitely something to do with filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was hoping to come out here and find more like-minded people, which I think I have found with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we're definitely... Yeah, because I also had the curiosity of like, 
my friend wanted to come out here to visit, but also to look into, hey, it's your vibe. I've learned a lot about myself on this trip so far. On uh, LA, I've realized how much relationships matter. Mm -hmm. Even though I was coming out here to meet like-minded people, there have been times where I've had to do things just by myself, and I've realized you know, just how important it is to have like-minded people along with you because when you're by yourself, it sucks. And I do think I was getting into quite a bad routine and different things back at home where it was just kind of too much of the same shit happening over and over. Uh, whereas out here has really, you know, forced me to be present and, as I said, just speak to new people, discover new things. And I think I am going to go back with quite a different perspective. But so far, I've just, my core lesson has been it doesn't matter where you are, if you don't have friends or some kind of network there with it. It's all about relationships. Like, I feel like in a magical heaven right now, like in movie land. I am movie land. Okay, mission. Get down the steep ass hill in the dark. <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna fall and die. <laughs> we're not even at the steep part yet. This is. <laughs> I'm laughing, but this is like actually dangerous. <laughs> See, we're fine. Whoa. Whoa! Thank God for that branch. My glasses. Laugh a bit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you have to get down. <laughs> Woo! Oh. We did it. Oh my god. Uh, give me a high five for that one. <laughs> yeah. After easily my best day in Los Angeles yet, we walked down the rest of the mountain and Ubered home. I was so happy to have made a genuine friend, but honestly, that was nothing compared to the amount of amazing people we were going to meet the next day which started with us visiting Hollywood. Look, it's that famous YouTuber, Jack Black. <laughs> the movie that started it all, King Kong, 1933, one of my favorites. The favorite, that is so cool. So, so cool. So yeah, we got to see the Walk of Fame, look at some other pretty cool locations. Kyle nearly died eating an In-N-Out. <laughs> it's a front, salty. It's good. Very oh, salty. Yeah. <laughs> I felt a little bad for just laughing at him, but honestly, it was just so funny. But yeah, we both like in and out pretty cool. And overall, it was a pretty good day, but where the real fun started to happen was whenever we ran into another group of people outside our hostel that night. Now, I went to bed pretty early, like at 11 o'clock or something, but luckily Kyle stayed out with him and he sent me some pictures. It looked like they had a fun time. <laughs> But yeah, eventually I got meeting up with him again the next morning. We just went out to a place called Jinkies to get breakfast. I don't know if you guys remember the movie The Breakfast Club. Turns out we're all fans of it and we were all eating breakfast. So what better name to call ourselves than The Breakfast Club? It's actually pretty crazy how quickly all of us have become friends. Literally everyone who you're seeing in this video were strangers the day before. We all had only just met and now we were all just hanging out as if we were best friends. And as we were all just walking around the streets of LA like one big mafia gang, we were just finding other solo travelers and then they would just join us and just start walking around and hanging out. It was so nuts. Kyle spontaneously booked a ticket for Universal Studios Hollywood and I was so excited this was going to be such a nostalgic feeling but at this point the end of the adventure was looming over us I tried to ignore it and just have a good time
Oh. If you have a message for the world, what's your message for the world? Uh, the me my message would be um, have fun guys, go out, meet some people, and don't be afraid to speak English to other people. <laughs> We don't care if you have an accent on though. That's a great message. Yeah. Do you have a message for the world, Kyle? Yeah. And um. Don't fucking propose at a club like they fucking did. What the fuck was that? <laughs> and welcome them. Yeah, so yeah, what do you think of the trip now overall? Now that it's said and done. Totally unexpected. I am glad that Airbnbs here are expensive. That I can kind of go to a hostel. A hostel is a good decision. Uh, because I think my whole time here would have been very long. Uh, the people really do make a break. The holiday and the location. Yeah. I'm just realizing how important it is. They made going to places a lot more like eventful, yeah. uh, memorable, uh, impactful. Um, like if I did it by myself, yeah, it would be cool and whatnot, but I would not have enjoyed it as much. No, it was yeah. So I had to say goodbye to Kyle as he got an Uber to the airport, which was actually really sad. And to make it worse, Kyle was actually leaving a day earlier than me, so I still had a full day left. But luckily, Anaïs, the French girl from the breakfast club, was still there. So me and her hung out for a day. So we got off the train and... Please God, <laughs> help me! We, we've I'm been walking. <laughs> we've been walking for quite a while in the heat, but we got water. I got smart water. She got water. <laughs> um, uh, no, that's, true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, we're going towards the Hollywood sign. Maybe one day we will arrive. Yeah. Of course, we did eventually make it to Hollywood, and we even recreated the shot I got with Kyle a few days prior. We had a great time, but unfortunately, the day did have to come to an end, just like the trip as a whole. And I genuinely had the time of my life. I've got to admit, goodbye suck, but it's certainly better than the feeling of numbness I had before the trip. The world is so huge and there are so many places to see and people to meet. I don't care how big you think your problem is, your solution is out there. You've just got to get out and find it. And just like drunk me failed to do the Karate Kid Korean kick the first couple of times, and just like I failed to make friends the first few days, if you keep trying and keep searching, you will eventually find what you're looking for. Remember when I said this was a love story? Well, it wasn't the romantic kind. This was a love story of friendship. Yeah! Nobody mess with me! Yeah. <laughs> I agree!